Hello everybody, I'm Nickel. Welcome to my .NET Developer Roadmap for 2025. Like every year, I'm releasing one of those so you can understand how you can navigate the ecosystem and what you need to learn as a .NET developer. Now, I have to be extremely clear. Everything you see here is an exhaustive list, meaning you don't actually need to know everything as a .NET developer. If you are a junior, you need to know part of this. If you're a mid, a bit more. If you're a senior, a bit more. And if you're a principal or a lead, then ideally everything. But don't feel like there's pressure to you to know everything as a junior or someone just starting. You don't. I will explain how things are per level as we go. And also this is an interactive roadmap that you can get, download, and then keep track of for yourself. So for example, if you say, oh, I learned Git, I don't need to worry about this anymore. I can go ahead and say that this is now done and you can keep track of your progress for yourself. Now, something very interesting this year is that we didn't really have much of a change between 2024 and 2025 in the ecosystem. So if you watch the old video, you really don't need to watch this one. There are some new things and I will give new context on several things that changed. But if you're already someone who is familiar with the ecosystem, then you don't need this. This is just my opinion. So what do we have here? Well, we have all of these things that I'm going to go in in a second. But before that, like last year, I'm offering a 20% discount code to anyone downloading this roadmap. So you can use the link in the description, download it. You're going to get the code you can use in any course or bundle as well as on any online workshop that I'm running. Yes, we just launched some online workshops where I am live with you teaching you a certain topic for two full days. So link in the description for that. Not only that, but until the end of February, you can get our two C Sharp courses, the Getting Started and the Deep Dive completely for free and they're yours to keep. Use the link in the description and 11 hours of content is yours. That's all the marketing I'm going to do. The last thing I want to mention is that if there's a star next to any of those things listed, then on Dome Trainer we have a course for it. If not, then we don't. Okay, so to start with, we have general developer skills. Version control is the most important thing you need to know Git. It's the standard. I know this changes if you're in game development and you use Unity or UE, and there are different softwares you need to use for that. But even then, you really need to know how to use Git and you really need to know how to use GitHub. Um, you might need to also be able to use GitLab or Bitbucket, depending on what your company is using. But all of that is built on the same principle. So you need to know Git. Then you need to know how to search. So Google is a must know. And that's what this green tick means. Stack Overflow having a purple tick means that it's a good to know. And that's because I see less and less Stack Overflow usability and usefulness over time. And that's why ChatGPT this year is a must know. It's gotten way, way better. And I can tell you from personal use that I use that way more than Stack Overflow. Surprisingly, it's getting really, really accurate. It's not perfect yet. And if you have suspicions that it might be wrong, please check on Stack Overflow too. But this can fix many of your problems and answer many of your questions. Then we have IDs you need to know. That's a new addition. I didn't know why I didn't have it previously. You need to know how to use Visual Studio or Rider now with the free non-commercial plan. I highly recommend it for everybody. Visual Studio Code is a good alternative, especially with a C Sharp dev kit, but that does require a license for commercial use, same as Visual Studio. So make sure you check that out. And then Cursor is an interesting alternative I have my eyes on. I think eventually Visual Studio and the Visual Studio team will integrate everything that Cursor can do in Visual Studio Code. However, for now, it is an amazing ID. It integrates AI features into your ID and it's just mind blowing what you can do. I can do front end even though I'm a back end developer. That's how good it is. Then for C Sharp, we have C Sharp 13, .NET 9, the .NET CLI, as well as .NET Aspire, which this year, in my opinion, is a must know. Everyone needs to know Don't Aspire. The biggest brain of the .NET team are on this. You should absolutely know how to use it and integrate it into your applications, especially if you're doing distributed systems and cloud stuff. Then we have the solid principles as well as young need dry in case. We've talked about this a billion times as well as ASP.NET Core basics from web API to minimal API routing all the way to things like Jot, Basic Auth, and all the other types of Auth that are extremely, extremely popular. Then you have the RDBMS databases. You know, you need to know your SQL syntax. You need to know how RDBMSs work, indexes, how to write queries, SQL. Those are fundamentals that every developer needs to know. I still am against stored procedures and triggers. You should not be using these features anymore. 
they have problems and if you want to see a video on why you should not use top procedures for example leave a comment down below and i will make that video as well as the engines you should know like postgresql extremely popular one of the most popular if not the most popular rdbms engine out there and then sql server and mysql or mariadb then you have your rest minimal api fast endpoint as an alternative hot chocolate for graphql and then grpc you have your dapper for database connections is what i use but you can also use antifamer core with all of these other sub branches and you have repo db which is a hybrid scenario and then you have an hybrid which i think you should not really use anymore it's very archaic at this point and then you have dependency injection, the native package, and then Scrutor to add some interesting extensions. You have your NoSQL databases such as Redis and Elasticsearch, as well as cloud proprietary ones like DynamoDB, CosmosDB. You might also have MongoDB here. You might also have RavenDB here. There's many type of NoSQL databases as well as Couchbase, I think. So there's many, many options, but ultimately those are the ones you should know. If you know these, then you can adapt your knowledge on NoSQL databases on any other NoSQL database because they're built on the same patterns. Then you have your caching, output caching, response caching, as well as Redis caching with the Stack Exchange library. We have your logging with the logging extensions package as well as Serilog. I recommend you know both. I do use both myself. Then you have your messaging. So service bar, CWS, SNS, SQS, RabbitMQ, Mass Transit, Wolverine. I am back at recommending and service bus this year. That's because they have been seriously improving and modernizing the product. So I think it's worth another shot. I still think ultimately Mass Transit is a better library, but it is a great package to use as well, especially with all the modernization efforts. Then you have unit testing. You know, I still stand by X unit and unit is a great alternative. MS test is getting better, but it hasn't gotten better enough for me to be able to recommend it as an alternative yet but i think next year this will be changing then we also have t unit that just sort of launched but i don't want to put it in here yet i'm keeping an eye on it maybe next year t unit will also be here it's a greatly designed library i think and it has a bright bright future if the developer keeps working on it then any of the mocking libraries and substitute is what i'm using mock and then fake it easy that not that many people use but still a great library this year, I recommend Shudli for fluent accessions. So accessions done in a fluent way. I advise against fluent accessions, the library, due to the package changes and the bait and switch. Then you have test data generation. Bogus is great for realistic looking fake data. And then auto fixture for the rest. Integration testing. Again, I stand by test containers and respawn. You can do tons of things with it. And this year, I added architectures and paradigms. So I do think to some capacity, you should be aware with domain-driven design, clean architecture, modular monoliths, vertical slice architecture, event-driven architecture, and event source. And again, if you're unsure on where to start, we do have courses on all of those things. So you should definitely take a look at it if you are looking to join a company that uses any of those. Snapshot testing, verify is a must know. I don't know why I forgot to change this. This should be a green. Verify is an excellent, excellent library for verifying test data. Then end-to-end -end testing playwright is great. Performance testing K6 is still the boss in my opinion. And then you have things like async documentation, open API. We don't have swagger anymore that you need to know not that this is a specific type of technology. It was just a flavor of visualizing everything. Then API documentation, open API more relevant than ever with the latest .NET 9 changes. Async API is still there. If you want to document your async APIs, then you have Rifit still as the king of API SDK libraries. You have your task scheduling as well as Open telemetry being the king of monitoring and telemetry. I think you still need to know Prometheus, Grafana, and the ELK stack. All of these are used pretty much everywhere. Then in terms of containers, you have Docker and Podman as an alternative, especially with the license changes. Some people are using Podman now. And then you still have orchestration with Kubernetes and tooling with K9 and Lens if you want to visualize what's going on into your cluster. Then we have serverless, Azure Functions, and AWS Lambdas, of course, and file storage. This is misspelled Azure Storage and AWS S3. In terms of libraries, again, poly fluent validation that hasn't changed yet into a paid license. Hopefully it doesn't. Humanizer core for humanizing your context of your application. 
then benchmark.net, a must know in my opinion nowadays, mediator, and units.net again from human readable units, as well as DevOps with infrastructure as code with Terraform and Pulumi. Terraform in many ways is still the king and Pulumi. I should point out that you should really know whatever your cloud provider is also using. So the CDK for AWS or Bicep for Azure, I will add them into this list as well. But ultimately, that's all there is to it, in my opinion. I didn't want to make it extremely long because I don't want to scare you with how many things you need to learn. And that's why I didn't talk about some of the other subjects. Yeah, they're here, but maybe they're not as relevant for you. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this roadmap and what do you think is missing or should be added or even changed or removed? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.